what we're going to do is we're going to use this psalm as part of our opening prayer, and we're going to use the um, spoken response. So after we begin, we're going to, I'll say a little prayer, and then I will do the spoken response, and then you repeat that, and then just like we do at Mass at, a litur at the Liturgy of the Word. Um, we always begin everything that we do in, uh, as Catholics by making the sign of the cross. We do that because we really mark ourselves with the truth that Father Jerome talked about last week, and that is that God is a community of persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We use this ancient sign to show that we belong to God, that we belong to the one who made us and the one who saved us, and the one who continues to animate our life from the time we're born until the time we die, and in fact forever. So you don't have to be Catholic to make the sign of the cross. So I invite anybody, as we go on through our CIA, as we get, begin to pray, that you're certainly welcome to make the sign of the cross if you feel comfortable doing that. So we begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, I ask you to come with us this evening to send your Spirit to open our hearts and our minds so that we can know you more, so that we can love you, so that we can open our hearts, so that our lives can be conformed to your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray especially for those people who lost their lives today in Washington. We pray that all violence would cease, that you would come and be embraced by all as the Prince of Peace. And we ask you to keep all of our families safe, help us to live a life that is free of fear and rooted in you. And now we pray a psalm. We pray a prayer that maybe Jesus prayed, because Jesus did pray the Psalms. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving power among all nations. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. Let the peoples praise thee, O God. Let all the peoples praise thee. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou dost judge the people with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. O God, let all the nations praise you. Let the peoples praise thee, O God. Let all the peoples praise thee. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. God has blessed us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. Tonight we bring all of our hopes and dreams, all of our intentions, and we give them to you. Give them to you in the name of your Son, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. I'm going to do a Marco Rubio. <laughs> Tonight I'm going to talk about the story of the people of God. And actually, this is all of our story. Because God created everyone, every person who is born. Every person is born, loved, beloved of God, born with a purpose, and born so that the divine life of God can be lived. So this is our story. It's everybody's story. Now, some people never hear the story. Some people hear the story and reject the story. But if we hear the story and we believe and we put our faith our trust in the one who is the 
source and creator of this story, then we live as brothers and sisters. We can be through baptism incorporated into the church and we can become part of this ongoing story that began with before, even before creation. I'm going to make a statement. God willed to give us hope by offering his mere creatures, us, intimate union with himself. God willed to give us hope by offering his mere creatures intimate union with himself, gradually revealed in a succession of covenants. We are saved from sin for this purpose, so that we might choose to respond in faith to his final covenant in the Son. It's a lot of words. It's a lot of words that we don't necessarily always use. And I'm going to talk about just a few of those words before we start. When we talk about God, and Father Jerome talked about last week, who is God? And that's a pretty mind-blowing, large topic. Okay, we, no matter how much we talk about it, we could talk about this every night, just who is God? We would never exhaust that because God is beyond our understanding and comprehension. But what we know about God, we know because God himself has revealed it to us. So in other words, with our own human mind and our own human knowledge, we can, Saturday is a good example. Saturday was a beautiful day, wasn't it? I stood outside, you can stand outside, no matter what you know, what you believe, what whoever you are, you can look around and you can just see the beauty of creation and you can see the order of things and you can say with your human reason, wow, there has to be something bigger than me involved in this, right? But for us to understand who God is, the Blessed Trinity, Father Jerome talked about, for us to really know this, no matter how much we sat and thought about it, no matter how much we contemplated it, we could not know it unless God himself revealed it to us. That's divine revelation. And that is what a mystery is. A mystery is, or mysteries are, those things that we could not know unless they were revealed to us by God. Now, once they're revealed by God, we can understand them. The human mind can understand them. Maybe not fully, but they can be understood and they are reasonable. So everything we talk about in our CIA, everything that the church proposes for our belief is not something that was concocted by someone in the third century or someone um, in the time of Moses or someone who, um, you know, was in a great university. Everything that we talk about or propose for belief has been revealed to us by God. So we deliver divine truths, not human truths, divine truths, given to us by God himself in various ways. Now, there are many people who come from faiths that believe that revelation continues. So in other words, some people may come from a, a faith or a, or a religion that says, the leader of my church woke up last night and God revealed to him something that was never known before. Okay, that, that's, not, that's never going to happen in the Catholic Church. Because God de delivered to us over generation after generation after generation after generation 
through the whole Old Testament. And then finally, in the fullness of revelation came with Jesus Christ. And then Jesus, God's final and full word, with the death of Jesus and his ascension into heaven, and then with the death of those who he had taught from his mouth, with the death of the last apostle, divine revelation was closed. So tradition tells us that St. John was the last apostle, the last one that was with Jesus, who heard the truth delivered from God's own mouth to tell us about not only who God was, but who we were as human persons. Once John died, divine revelation was closed. The truth that was, been, that was given was then, had to be articulated, right? So people had an experience of Jesus Christ. They knew he was God. They had witnessed the power of the Holy Spirit. They had also been taught through many thousands of years that God was one. And Jesus was the Son of God. So now what Father Jerome talked about last week had to be articulated. How is it that we have one God who is three divine persons? That took long time. It is very difficult sometimes to go from an experience and then to be able to share that experience with others in a way that is true and meaningful. That is why Jesus left us the church. With the Holy Spirit as the guarantor of the truth. The Holy Spirit as the church's memory. Now we're getting ahead of ourselves. So this is a long story that begins before time. The other thing is when I talk of God, or any of us talk about God, we use words like, he said. God is beyond gender. God is beyond time. God created time. But God is beyond time. And so anytime we use, I use human terms to talk about something that is way beyond, way beyond the physical, okay, then we begin talking about what faith is, something that is beyond the physical. It is metaphysical, right? And our human language sometimes kind of limps when we try to do that. We do the best we can. But for us to begin this story, it's important that we understand who God is. So before time began, before all of the universe was created, before there was day and night, and there was water, and there were animals, and there was all of this creative world that we know, there was God. God existed, has always existed. God has, there was never a time when there wasn't God. God is perfect self-understanding, perfect intelligence, perfect goodness, perfect beauty, and most of all, perfect love. Because it has been revealed by God himself that God is indeed one God, but a community of three divine persons. The Father eternally pouring his love, his complete self-possession, his intellect, all of his knowledge into the Son, who in the beginning of creation is the divine word that the Father speaks and everything came into being. And the Son possessing all that the Father is, yet not losing all of who the Son is, gives all that to the Father in this eternal, um, 
as a dance of love. And their love is so profound that it flows out of them in another person, the Holy Spirit. Now, we know this, and we start to see hints of this from the very beginning of the stories of creation. We see God, little by little, revealing himself. Now, one thing that we know, even from our human experiences, that there is an attribute of love that is universal. Love is creative. Okay? Love creates. Creates in our lives through children, but it also creates in other ways. Love creates beautiful things. Love creates charity for others. Love is created. This is just in us. But for God, who is absolute perfect love, the creation that flows from God is everything. Everything that exists is this outpouring of the Blessed Trinity. So God creates on all levels. And God created the universe. He created everything that we know in the physical world. He created animals. Okay? And he created human beings. And in the book of Genesis, very in the first few chapters of the book of Genesis, we begin to see a hint of this community of love that God is. Because God says, let us create man in our image. So in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. He created human persons in his image. And what does that mean? Does it mean the way they look? Does it mean the clothes they wear? He created human beings to share in the divine life that is this love. Now, everything else in the universe, you know, what do we have? These physical things that are created are things that were created for our use. But one thing that we know it is to be created in God's image is that we use things, but we don't use people, right? We don't use persons. That being created in the image and likeness of God means that we are created to love with complete generosity other human persons. If we are a married couple, it means that we love that person that we're given, holding nothing back. And this is what it means to be created in the image and likeness of God. So, God also created other beings. He created human beings who are corporal. We have bodies, right? But we also have eternal souls. But God also created other beings. He created angels. He created beings, these magnificent beings of light, pure intellect, pure spirit, who are not corporal. They don't have bodies. And they were created in a particular way for particular reasons, to glorify him and to do his work. But angels were created knowing everything. So that when God created the angels, he created them with their intellect fully intact. Their will, their, um, all of their faculties fully intact. And at their creation, he said to them, will you serve me? And most of the angels said yes. But some said no. 
And when they said no, they knew the consequence of that. And they took themselves from the presence of God. <clears throat> the angels fell. They fell from God's grace, from his divine work, from this presence of the divine. They did this knowing the consequences, that they were taking themselves out of God's graces. This is Satan and his minions. Okay, the angels fell. Now, human beings, we, we know this. Jake has a kind of a new baby. You know, you've all seen babies. We were all babies. We're all, we all know how we are. We are not born knowing everything, right? <clears throat> That's not how we're born. We're incremental people. We have to learn and grow. Okay, so and that's how we were created. When the first people, the first human persons were created, Adam and Eve, when they were given this soul, this, then they were created out of something. Okay, God, God was created out of nothing, but we are created beings. We're matter created. Um, they were given the same choice. They were given the earth. They were also given complete unfettered access to the one who created them. If you read the book of Genesis, the very first parts, you don't have to read very far, and, you, and I know you all got Bibles, you should just do this. Read the first three chapters of Genesis. God walked with them in the garden. The place he created for them was in harmony. They had what they needed, and they had, they saw God face to face. And he said, you cannot do this. You cannot eat of that tree. Now, as we go along in RCA, we'll talk about um, how we read scripture and, and uh, different, uh, different senses and different ways that we read scripture. But God said, will you serve? Will you put your trust in me? And when they disobeyed, they ruptured their relationship with God. And all of a sudden, the face of God, which they had seen and understood, because they were created with original purity and innocence, was clouded and deformed. And this was such a horrendous, such a horrendous um, breach with God that every human being that was ever born from that time on, we have this. This is something that's like hereditary. We inherit, every person, this stain of original sin, this stain of disobedience. Now, God is perfect in his knowledge and understanding. And God knew when we were created, and he gave us probably one of the most precious gifts he could have, and that was free will, that we would disobey, that this would happen. So God had, as part of a plan from the beginning, a way that he would save us. So God didn't say, oh, that didn't work out. Plan B, you know, he didn't have to. God's plans are perfect. So in the very beginning, in Genesis 3, 15, God is talking to you, if you want to look, if you want to look, it's on page 12. If you have your Bible, you might want to look at this. So we're not, we're, we're not very far into scripture, are we? Uh, Humanity didn't make it very far before making the wrong choice. Um, but this is what God says. And God is addressing Satan, the one who was the tempter. So chapter 3, verse 15. And this is a really important part of scripture because it is the first time we have foreshadowed this magnificent plan to save us that was going to take place way down the road. God is talking to Satan. 
I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. They will strike at your head while you strike at their heel. This is the first inkling that we have recorded that indeed God is going to save us from ourselves. And as we go through our CIA, as you read more of scripture, you're going, what you're going to see is that every word, this is the divine word, every word, the word that created the universe, that perfect thought of the Father, the divine word until he was made flesh and we know him as Jesus, this is the divine word. As Catholics, Everything in here, every word, we reverence in the most profound way. And everything in here talks about Jesus. Now sometimes that's failed, and sometimes we have to think about that. The more we know our faith and we listen, especially at Mass, because you'll hear the Old Testament reading and the New Testament reading, most of the time, that Old Testament reading is the foreshadowing of what is fulfilled in Christ. So we have this amazing period now, after the fall, of God reclaiming us for himself. And the way he does that, through all of this part of sacred scripture, is, is our story, the story of the people of God and how he went about revealing himself, that's recorded. Then, how all of that was fulfilled in Jesus, and then how Jesus left the church, and how we are now part of that story today. Still being lived out. Still us as human persons, accepting, hearing, as all of you have done, something in you has called you here, and that's the Holy Spirit, because God has a plan for each one of you. I don't know what it is, but you may know what it is by the end of this. Not tonight, but by the end of this process. A plan that will unfold for the rest of your lives. So, now this, we're back to the garden, Adam and Eve. Now God is no longer seen clearly, and this plan is rolled out in what we can call covenants. These times when God comes to people he chooses to reveal who he is. And to invite them into a loving, familial relationship. Now, I want to propose something. I'm not going to use something that's in kind of an everyday thing, but the reality is, because we're all created for one purpose, and that is to live forever with God. That's why we're created. We're created to get to know Him here. We're created to open our hearts for Him to enter into us so that we can be, our minds can be expanded, our souls can be expanded so that we can live in conformity with how we were created, with this beautiful dignity. So I propose to you that every one of us here is hardwired for this. Now, if you buy a car now, right, it's probably hardwired for Bluetooth. You know, I mean, you have a Bluetooth phone and you have a car that's hardwired for Bluetooth. All you have to do is figure out how to pair the phone with the car, and then you get in the car ever after and you turn it on and turn on your phone, and the phone rings and it talks to you through the car. Right? Because it's hardwired for that. Everybody's like that. We're hardwired for God. So everything that is truth beauty and goodness, those attributes of God, all of those things we have a desire for because that's what we were created for. 
So 